Let's bring up our next storyteller, Bookie. Good evening. Some time ago, I quit my job here in Chicago. And my husband and I and our then three-year-old daughter moved to Rochester, Minnesota for him to complete residency as part of his medical training. Having lived in Lagos, London, and then Chicago, this was a bit of a change for me. You see, Rochester is a small town with a population of about 95,000 people. In comparison, the city of Chicago has a population of about 2.7 million. <laughs> Needless to say, I was apprehensive about this move. I guess you could say I was fatigued about starting over. You know how you go to Comcast to return your receiver <laughs> and you stand in the line and you get to the front and just when you get to the front, the person at the front tells you, oh, sorry, you're in the wrong line. You need to go somewhere else. <laughs> and then so you go somewhere else and then you have to start over again. It's kind of like that, only many times over. Anyway, I, I guess I was fatigued about um, getting to find my way around it, a new place, you know, reintroducing myself to people, coming up with stories every time they ask me, where are you from, you know? I, and every time I have to reinvent, recreate, it gets a bit tiring sometimes. Anyway, on our first night, I remember on our first night in the new house, I couldn't sleep. And I remember my husband saying to me, listen, it's quiet. <laughs> there were no car horns or loud music blaring sirens to interrupt the silence. And to my dismay, I realized I was missing the loud music, which I previously loved to hate. <laughs> earlier, that, earlier that day, our next door neighbor, Mr. and Mrs. Don, a white couple in their mid-70s, had stopped by to welcome us to the neighborhood. They had lived in the house next to us, which was built at the same time as ours, since the 60s. And they had seen people move from our house, and it changed hands, different families come and go. And they brought us cookies, too. And as they were leaving, they mentioned that they didn't babysit. <laughs> <laughs> now, life in Rochester was very quiet and lonely for me. My husband was either busy working or sleeping. The joke among the ladies then was that our spouses were married to their pagers. You know, you could, if you couldn't find them anywhere, just page them. They wouldn't respond to the sound of a screaming baby. They'll be, but they would get up and stand to attention at the sound of a pager. Such was the life of a resident at those times. I can't remember exactly how it happened. But a few weeks after we moved in, our daughter started to go over to the Duns to visit them and to play there. They had these vintage toys they would lay out for her and she would play with it. They even taught her how to put back her toys when she finished playing with them. She never did that with me. <laughs> When I went to pick her up, two-minute conversations could easily turn into an hour of just chatting with them about everything and nothing. They were kind with their words and generous with their listening. We got excited about the, uh, uh, the sight of mini Kit Kats and um, so mini soda cans that they lined up on the kitchen counter awaiting our arrival when we go to visit them. I got excited, and it was my, for my daughter, but I got excited anyway. <laughs> Over time, we developed an ease and closeness that was comforting. By now, a year had passed, and we've welcomed another daughter. And guess who was there to take care of our older daughter when we had to go into hospital? Yes, it was the dance. <laughs> Mr. Don plowed, my, the snow, plowed the snow in the cold winter months. And when, and when, they, when they were around, because they would usually go, go to Florida, and on, Sunday, on a Sunday evening, they could be seen taking walks, pulling the girls in toll in the red wagon. They conspired with my husband to arrange a surprise wedding anniversary trip. I still remember the look of mischief and sheer delight on their faces when the surprise was revealed. At the end of residency, we returned to Chicago, 
but stayed in touch with the dance. We exchanged letters, and the girls were always happy to receive stuffed envelopes filled with mini candies, bo books, or soft toys during major holidays. I would usually call them, and they would call me back. And we visited a couple of times. After about two, two years after we left, um, Mrs. Dunn's health deteriorated, and she passed away shortly afterwards. Remember I'd mentioned to you that they didn't babysit? Mrs. Dunn couldn't babysit alone because she had onsets of Parkinson's and they didn't think it was safe to have the children with her when she did it. Now, a few years ago, Mr. Dunn moved into assisted living and we went to visit him to check out his new digs. It was a good visit. We talked about the good old days and our time together. At the end of the visit, we, we hugged and we cried for the longest time, or oh, it seemed very long. I guess it takes a while to bind the memories and experiences of many years. Love is strange. It sneaks up on you unexpectedly. It's like that thing you don't know that you want but turns out to be exactly what you need. So, in my sporadic moments of clarity, I remind myself, I will relent more, I will yield more, for who knows what joys will come. Thank you. <laughs>